So first, let's take a look at the formula. The formula for specific heat is E equals mc delta T. E is for energy. Um, energy is usually measured in joules or something called calories. C-A-L is the abbreviation for that. Um, sometimes energy is also referred to as heat. And when we do thermodynamics, you're going to see how heat and energy are related. But anytime a problem says anything about heat or energy, you're going to look at the E. The M is for mass. It's either going to be the mass of the object, the mass of the liquid. It is always going to be measured in grams. You don't have another option here because of the unit for specific heat. Um, the mass has to be in grams. C is actually for the specific heat of a substance. Specific heat is a intrinsic value. Um, it is a property of a substance. The unit is a little odd. The unit is calories per gram degree Celsius. But the unit actually gives you a little bit of idea of what it means. Specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree. So when it says calories, that's the heat. And it's going to be one gram of substance by one degree. That's where you get the gram and the Celsius. So it's the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a substance. It can get a little confusing as, as far as high, low specific heat. When something has high specific heat, it actually doesn't change temperature very easily because it takes a lot of heat and energy to change the temperature. Something with high specific heat would be like oven mitts, rubber, something that's naturally resistant to a temperature change. When something has low specific heat, that means it doesn't take a lot of energy to change the temperature. This would be like metal, like cooking pans and things like that. It takes very little heat or energy to change the temperature. And then finally, T is the change in temp. Don't forget, delta always means change. Um, the temperature actually doesn't matter what units it's in, but most likely it's going to be in Celsius. Don't forget as well, when you do a temperature change, it's always the final minus the initial. That's going to come into play with the sign, and there's going to be times, especially when you do thermodynamics, where the sign of something is very important. So when you do the change of temperature, if you're calculating it, you need to make sure that you're doing the final temperature minus... So now we're going to look at specific heat. Um, we're going to do some practice for initial temperature. So we start with the problems. Again, you want to read the problem. You want to highlight the information you're given. So it says 5 grams of copper was heated from 20 degrees to 80 degrees. How much energy was used to heat the copper? And it says the specific heat capacity of copper is 0.092 grams. So if we analyze this in terms of what you're given. The 5 grams, obviously, is the mass. So we have 5 gram mass. Here is the temperature change. Here is one temp. Here is another temp. Remember, you want final minus initial. So you got to figure out what was the first temp, what was the, the second temp. So it said it was heated from 20 to 80. So the 80 is actually your final temp, and the 20 was your initial temp. It says how much energy, so you're actually going to calculate the E here, and then it gives you the specific heat C. Notice it gives it to you like a known. Specific heat is a known. Um, you're either going to calculate for it in problems, or it's going to be given to you just like that, because it's a, it's a known value, it's a recorded value, you'd find it in a table. So I'm just going to write my equation. E equals MC delta T. I'm calculating for the energy. My mass was 5 grams. My specific heat was given in the problem, 0.92. And then my temperature change, remember, final minus initial, so it's 80 minus 20, not the other way around. So as you can see, once you figure out um, what all your knowns are, this is very quite simple. You're just really solving. Um, remember to subtract this first, your order of operations. You want to do things in the parentheses first. So when you do all that math, very simply, you get 27.6. And remember, it's energy. 
And you can see right here the energy should be calories because that's what's given. Okay, we move on to the next one. How much heat is absorbed? So remember I told you, when they talk about heat, they also mean it as energy. Heat and energy are synonymous here. By 20 grams of granite, as energy from the sun causes its temperature to change from 10 degrees to 29 degrees, the specific heat of granite is 0.1. So again, it says how much heat, that is the E, heat and energy are interchangeable. 20 grams is your mass. Then we have a temperature change here. It goes from 10, there's your start, to 29, there's your finish. And then your specific heat is given like a known. I'm solving for my energy. Then I'm going to do MC delta T. So my mass was 20 grams. My C given in the problem was 0.1. And then I'm going to do final minus initial. So I'm going to do 29 minus 10. Remember to do that first. You're going to do all the math and you get 38 calories of heat that's exchanged. So we do the next one. How much heat, again it's talking about heat, heat and energy are the same, when 30 grams of water at 96 degrees cools to 25 degrees, the specific heat of water is one calorie. Okay, so I'm going to plug this right into the equation here. So we have an E, a mass. So again, the temperature change, it goes at 96 and it goes to 25. So 96 would be your TI. 25 will be your TF, and then this is your specific heat. So I'm going to plug it right in the equation this time because we're solving for E again. So I have 30 times 1, and then my final 25 minus the initial. So again, once you get really set on finding these um, units out and finding what they should be, it's actually not that difficult to solve these problems. We do have something interesting here, though. We have a negative value here. So we get negative 2,130. Now, the negative is going to come more into play when we do thermodynamics. It kind of tells you the direction of the heat. In this case, it's not really necessary because it's asking for heat release, and that's kind of what the negative means. So you don't really need to include it in your answer. It's actually just asking for the value of, of heat exchanged. So we have one more, number 54. It says if a 3.1 gram ring, there's your mass, is heated using 10 calories. So now we have a different thing here. It's heated using 10 calories. It's actually giving me my E. So I have my mass here and I have my E. So it's going to be a little bit different of a problem. Temperature rises 17.9 degrees. Again, you don't have a final minus initial here. It doesn't give you a final, doesn't give you initial, it just gives you the change. That's okay. So instead of having to subtract like you've been doing, you just have the change right there. This time it wants you to calculate the specific heat. So it wants you to help calculate what the known is. Instead of giving you the known, it's giving you the E, and it's asking you to calculate the C. So I'm going to rewrite my formula here. and plug in what I know. Now I know my E is 10, so it's a little bit different setup. My mass is 3.1. Now I'm going to put a C for specific heat because that's what I'm solving for. And then 17.9 is simply the change in T. I don't have to do that subtraction there. So the only difference here is now you're kind of doing things a bit reversed. You're given the E, you're given the, the heat that's needed, and now you're trying to figure out what the specific heat is. So I'm going to do three, kind of set this up using your algebra. So to get rid of that, to get that unit by itself, I'm going to do 3.1 times 17.9, and I get 55.49 times C. And then, you know, using my algebra skills, 
I'm going to get C by itself, and I calculate that C is 0.18. Remember, my unit's really weird. It's calorie per gram degree Celsius. So that's just maybe something you have to get in your head. So in this case, I actually solve for the specific heat. But you see, these problems, once you kind of figure out how to pick out the nodes from the problem, they're not that difficult.